The world of Fallout is more plausible than you may think. If we started messing with our genes, we might be hulking out like super mutants and the military is probably working on power armor right this second. But one thing that we probably won't ever see, thanks science, is giant freaking bugs. the wasteland. There's just nothing quite like a stroll through the destruction punctuated by casadores and giant ants and rad roach ambushes. These mutated insects have grown to immense size as a result of the massive doses of radiation they received. But could insects ever really get this big? Oh God, could they ever get that big? What the heck is that? It doesn't take a massive blast of radiation to make giant insects though. The largest true bug is probably the giant water bug, a ferocious amphibious predator that can grow up to lengths of 15 centimeters or six inches. However, the title of heaviest insect goes to New Zealand's giant weta. It can weigh up to 70 grams or about the weight of a tennis ball. But a giant weta is not exactly a rad roach. Could insects ever get that size? There are no definitive answers as to why insects don't get the size of, say, dogs or cats. Oh, think about that for a second. But we know that it probably has something to do with the way insects breathe. <sighs> wait, wait, try this for a second. You are now in control of your own breathing. Ha <laughs> ha, psychologist land. Insects like ants, wasps, and beetles don't have lungs like you or I do. Instead, they let air passively flow into tiny holes that run along the length of their bodies called spiracles. spiracles. So let's look at how ants breathe. Instead of sucking in air into its mouth like we do, oxygen molecules float into the spiracles on the side of the ant. And then these oxygen molecules flow down trachea or tracheal tubes that taper down, 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 smaller and smaller until the ends of these tracheal tubes are distributing oxygen to the ant's individual cells. This method of respiration or breathing puts a hard limit on how big insects can get. There are two limiting factors with insect respiration that prevent fallout sized bugs. The first is that while the spiracles depend on the surface area of a bug, the tracheal tubes, the things that actually deliver oxygen to that bug, depend on its volume. For example, take a beetle and start increasing its size. The volume of this beetle will increase exponentially, more so than the surface area of that beetle. So, at some point, even if you are doubling or tripling the number of spiracles on this beetle, there will just be too much volume to deliver oxygen to. There is also the air molecule problem. Now, the longer that these tracheal tubes have to be, there's less and less oxygen at the end of these tubes for cells further down along the line as the cells are gobbling up these molecules as they go. However, this last limit depends on how much oxygen is in the atmosphere, and that's changed over the lifetime of the Earth. Over 300 million years ago, there was a lot more oxygen in our atmosphere, while today, every breath you take, every breath you take, may have up to 21% oxygen in it. Way back then, the air may have had up to 35% oxygen. That oxygen content allowed for absolutely enormous insects like Meganeura, an extinct dragonfly-like insect that had a wingspan of up to 75 centimeters or two feet and could weigh as much as 450 grams or about a pound. Oh, I'll kill it with lasers. Oh, and around that same time, there was a millipede called Anthropleura that could grow up to eight feet long, although it only ate plants still. Kill it with lasers. So could we ever get fallout-sized insects? Well, if an all-out nuclear war somehow changed the oxygen content of the atmosphere enough, or all that radiation changed the genes in the insects to give them more and more distributed tracheal tubes and spiracles, and they pass those genes on to future generations of insects, then maybe insects could get much, much larger, but maybe not rad roach-sized. I'm still gonna pack my power armor. Why? Because science. This bug's everywhere!
Want more science? Check out my last video on how many Nuka Colas you can drink before you. Ugh, fuck. Want more science? Check out my last video on how many Nuka Colas you can drink before you die. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos if you want, because science two days earlier than everyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up in the comment section below. But wait, it's holiday season, and at Nerdist.com we rolled out all of our holiday gift guides to help you shop for any nerd you need to. And we're also doing our annual gift guide giveaway, so head back to Nerdist.com to find out how to enter. Thanks.